Tom Holland was the hand double for a renowned New York artist who also taught the actor how to draw while working on the psychological thriller The Crowded Room for Apple TV+. Natalie Frank, 43, a Fulbright scholar and graduate of Yale and Columbia, has worked in the Whitney, Brooklyn Museum, and the Art Institute of Chicago Collections. She has also exhibited internationally at prestigious venues like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, London Museum of Design, Yale University Art Gallery, and many more. Natalie didn't hesitate when mega-producer Alexandra Milchen contacted her through cold email in February 2022 to inquire about her interest in working on an unnamed Apple TV Plus project. In an exclusive interview with Daily Mail, com, she stated, I called her immediately. The team behind the crowded room sought to include Natalie's wide-ranging body of work, which includes paintings, drawings, performance design, and book illustrations created over the previous 20 years, into the show sets, as Milchen had outlined for her. Natalie was also entrusted with generating dozens of original drawings intended to depict Danny's artwork. She spent two days on site to film two sketching scenes as Tom's persona, which is also how she got to function as his hand double. The 27-year-old actor Tom plays Danny, a socially awkward young guy and aspiring artist, in the miniseries, which debuted on June 9 and runs through July 2028. After firing a shot at Rockefeller Center, Danny is taken into custody in the first of the series' ten episodes. While he is awaiting trial, Danny is subjected to a protracted questioning by Raya, a psychologist played by Amanda Seyfried. When Raya starts questioning Danny about his origins and recent history, she learns that he has been spending a lot of time with an odd group of people who are ostensibly his pals. And every time Danny is put in one of a variety of emotionally taxing circumstances, they all seem to have a way of appearing. Raya eventually realizes Danny suffers from multiple personality disorder. His many different alters, or parallel personalities, frequently carry out complex plans designed to protect him and his emotions but really end up ruining his life. Viewers learn via flashbacks that Danny is a talented artist who likes drawing portraits of the people who are most important to him. Examples of Natalie's work, including earlier pieces and unique artwork she created just for the production, can be seen hanging silent style on the walls of Danny's home and prison cell throughout the play. The Wounded Storyteller Yale University Press, 2023 which features Natalie's illustrations of five gothic horror fairy tales by German romance author E.T.A. Hoffman, and The Island of Happiness, Princeton University Press, 2021, which features Natalie's interpretations of Madame Dolnoy's 17th century French fairy tales, are two of the more recent art books visible throughout the episodes. Additionally included are illustrations from the artist's renowned Grimm's Fairy Tales series, as well as numerous related artworks she produced for the 2019 Ballet Austin performance Grimm Tales, which was inspired by the original 2014 series.
Natalie explained why her aesthetic felt appropriate to represent Danny's art, given that he suffers from multiple personality disorder. I think a lot of my work revolves around dark interiority and psychological narratives that are created to express various sides of myself and the subjects that I want to investigate, Natalie said. The portraiture I create discusses what it means to be a human being. And that's what Danny's drawing, in my opinion, accomplished for him. He was able to place himself in a type of dynamic psychological environment because of it. Natalie quickly created portraits of more than a dozen characters for the production design, basing them on picture composites of each performer. These depict his love interest Annabelle Emmeled and Danny's mother Candy Emmy Rossum. She also provided paper representations of Danny's altars, who initially in the program seemed to be his friends from real life. Among them Mari Anna Sasha Lane, a troubled party girl who performs sexual acts on Danny's behalf. Yitzhak Safdi Lyaraz, an extremely tough character who steps in whenever Danny is in danger physically. And Mike Sam Vartholomios, a rebellious high school student. Adam is a fictional twin brother who Danny had as a youngster. Both children are portrayed by Zachary Golinger. When his stepfather starts abusing him sexually, Adam transforms into his first altar. According to the program, this experience is what led to Adam's development of many identities. Natalie depicted the twins side by side in another of her sketches for the exhibition. Levin Hawke, a rising star actor and the son of Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke, portrays Johnny, who personifies Danny's naughty but cunning side. Natalie remarked that she thought Levin was such a star when she first drew him and then met him. Natalie found herself in an Uber headed to the secret location where filming was happening around a month after Milchan's initial email. I was lost as to where I was headed. We were on the road for around 1.5 hours. She remembered, we ended up in an elementary school. A pair of corduroys and a long sleeve shirt that was a copy of what Tom Holland was wearing while acting as Danny were waiting for her inside her own caravan when she arrived there. Natalie laughed, unfortunately, because he has extremely thin hips, the trousers did not zip. She then had a meeting with a cosmetics artist who travels exclusively with Tom. She seated me in the chair and examined my hands before remarking, Well, we're gonna have to rouge the knuckles, because Tom has very pink knuckles. She gave me a manicure and painted my hands with foundation. She later applied some of my gouache on each of our hands in a similar colour and pattern while Tom and I were together, which I thought was great. Natalie was directed to the set to film the first sketching session after finishing up with the clothes and makeup. I was given sketching supplies and instructed to balance on top of a stone wall. And then, in take after take, I drew with cameras hovering above me, and probably 60 people watching me, in trousers that would not zip, straddling the stone wall, she remembered of the onset grind. They had taken my drawings of the cast and digitally undone them to various levels of finish. 
She also gave Tom advice on how to act when he needed to reveal his head and hands, such as when he was in the middle of painting or drawing. What I found most amazing was that he would watch me sketch and then, quite nonchalantly, sit in the chair and mimic my actions word for word. He is a wonderful actor, I mean, down to every last minute detail. The way I tapped the brush on the jar, and the way I cleaned it on the paper towel before I started everything. She enthused about working with Tom, saying, and in real time he really learned how to draw, or learned how to act like he was drawing. He questioned me extensively about drawing techniques, how to layer materials, what the various materials performed, and how I approached and began a drawing, she said. And he was beautiful, like an excellent listener. Once more, he was exceptionally shrewd in his observation, perception, and translation of pictures. When Natalie went to start drawing on camera for the first time, an unanticipated snag caused a brief panic on set when the team realized in horror that she, unlike Tom, is left-handed. Natalie recounted, the cinematographer was hovering above me, and I took out my left hand, and I think there was like a gasp of the moment the showrunners realized the possible mistake, and it was decided very quickly that Tom would become left-handed. Could she have pretended to be right-handed in order to get the shot? It wasn't going to happen if they wanted decent art, I assure you. It took roughly an hour of drying on location to acquire a few minutes of drying on film. Therefore, it had to be true. Additionally, Natalie wasn't informed that she was going to be videotaped until the day of the event. I'm glad they didn't let on that I'd be drying on film before they got me on set, because I had no idea, I said. I would have been a lot more anxious, she acknowledged. She quickly realized, though, that things needed to move quickly in order to stay up with the filming schedule. There are several hundred people on set all of whom are waiting for you, and you are very aware of how valuable time is. In addition, the pace is quick. And so, Natalie remembered, the director Cornel Mandrucho would cry, draw this. Draw that. Draw quicker. Make it more exciting. Natalie responded concisely when asked how she dealt with the pressure on the spot. Well, I just remembered, Tom Holland is the star, and I'm a hired hand. And I simply need to go as quickly as I can, 